Hey, hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel and i welcome you all to this another video where we will be talking about dax best interview questions that has been asked in the power bi interviews and data analytics interviews so uh, let's get started so the question number one as you can see on my screen show the month name in a correct order so this is one of the questions that is of very very basic level but it is most frequently asked questions in a power bi interviews uh, like this is this question is related to sorting the data so here you can see uh, i am having a column chart and in x axis in x axis i am having a month name and uh, i am showing total sales by the month but the problem is that if you can see here the month names are not in the correct order so generally we start month from uh, like start year from january february march and like that we go till the december but here the sorting is not correct april is coming first august is coming then december so it's a zigzag sorting and uh, it is causing difficulty in analyzing the trend of the cells right so that's why we need to sort it so just make sure that whenever you have been asked such type of questions so you will need a calculated column for sorting so one would be your categorical column uh, which is of course the month name in this scenario and the one column is for the sorting and then you will be able to sort the data so how can you do that so let me go to the date table and let me tell you the month name so this is my month name that i am using in the column chart but uh, you must have another column and on the basis of that column you will sort this column so if the column is present in your table then well and good otherwise you can create the column so i will go here right click new column so generally we need to give january the number one then number two for the february number three for the march and till december uh, 12 for the december so let me give it name month sort and i'm gonna make use of month function and it accepts date as argument so i will pass the date column and i will enter so here you can see uh, for july it has given us the seventh ranking because of course july is the seventh month of the year so, and that's it just go to your column this column select it and there is an option in power bi called sort by column so this is the option and like how you want to sort this column on the basis of the values of what column so i will choose here the column that i have created which is month sort yeah so let us go to the report view now you can see your month name are in the correct order from january to december so it's an easy question not very much tricky so let's see what is the question number two so question number two is a tricky question so here you can see uh, it has been written that show all show all the products in a card which is being selected by the user here in this slicer and in each product in new and like each product should appear in a new line and if all the products are selected then show all so the question is that this is a matrix visual where i am having year and month and i am showing two matrix total quantity and total sales and this is a product slicer so i can select the products and slice my table right so the question is that whatever the selection this product slicer is having like whatever the products we are selecting in a slicer it must appear in each new line like one product in each line and then the another product in next like that so whatever the selected products are there the list should also appear in a this card visual and if all the products are selected then this world all should appear so this is a question and the interviewer has asked to create a measure for this so how can you go about that uh, let me tell you so uh, let me create a new measure let me name it selected products okay so i'm gonna make a table one column table where i will 
लाइक आई विल हैव ऑल द लिस्ट ऑफ द यूनिक प्रोडक्ट्स दैट आई एम हैविंग इन माय प्रोडक्ट्स स्लाइसर सो लेट मी नेम इट एस प्रोडक्ट टेबल सो दिस इज अ वर्चुअल टेबल दैट आई एम क्रिएटिंग दैट्स वाई आई हैव नेम्ड इट एज प्रोडक्ट टेबल एंड आई एम गा मेक यूज ऑफ वैल्यूज डेक्स फंक्शन सो प्रोडक्ट टेबल प्रोडक्ट कॉलम so uh, for 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 now let's skip this and let me tell you what does this return so i'm going to go to the dex query view okay so i have already written here evaluate uh, that defines a table and distinct will return uh, let me change it to values yeah so values and product so let me run this query okay so here you can see i'm getting all the list of unique products that i'm having in my slicer right so this table i have virtually created in my mazer and i'm going to store this in a variable which is a product table that i have already did so let's go back yeah so this will return internally the list of all the unique products now what i'm going to tell power bi that uh, iterate through each row in this table and whatever the user uh, whatever the values you are having just concatenate all those values so i can make use of concatenate x text function let me name it the let me name the variable is selected products and i'm going to make use of concatenate x text function so it is asking for first argument which is a table so the table that i'm going to provide is the virtual table that i have created above so product table and the expression would be of course your product name so product tables product column and it is asking for the delimiter part so it means like how you want to concatenate the selected values so Uh, like the requirement is that uh, each value should appear in a new line so for new line we use unicat 10 you can google it you will have the more information about that so what it does is that it separates the value it will not show the values in a single line but each time it gets a value so it concatenates them but the delimiter would always be a new line so for now let me tell what does it return selected products okay let me drag this measure okay okay so let's select something so you can see what like i have selected three products and it is appearing correctly and, and in each line i am getting one product so that is the requirement but this measure is uh, like it is satisfying only the one condition which is select all the products in a like sele, uh, show all the products in a slicer separated by the new line but when i select all the products so it is giving me the list of all the products but what do we want we want that if the all product is selected in the slicer then it should show us the all so that's a tricky part comes in the question and most of the candidates uh, got blank here uh, because here we need to think uh, uh, logically that how can we achieve this so let's do some modifications to our mazer so let me make you understand what it is doing so it is uh, like it is iterating through this table that we have passed in the argument and whatever the values uh, it is getting like according to the user selection it is separating those values in a new line right so now so instead of returning selected products i can write if condition and i am going to tell power bi that if is filtered so i'm going to check uh, like uh, uh, is my product uh, column or product slicer has been filtered or not so i'm going to give the product 
as argument and I'm gonna check if it is filtered and with this I'm gonna combine one more condition with the AND operator and that would be count rows what I'm doing why I'm doing this I will uh, tell you once we get the result so count rows of my product table the virtual table that I have uh, defined here this should not be equal to the count rows of so count rows does like it accepts table as an argument and it returns uh, the number of rows that uh, the table has and here I will remove all the filters from my product column so what's the logic behind it I'm gonna tell you okay so if uh, just a minute I'm getting error uh, count rows all yeah okay so this would be my condition for the if statement so uh, the end operator if we have put the end operator so the both condition must satisfy then it will return uh, the expression that we have uh, written for the true so if this is filtered then give me the list of the products that the user is selected so we have already declared the variable for this otherwise you can give me all let's commit to the measure okay so uh, clearly you can see if I have selected all the products so it is giving me uh, the all and uh, if I select the list of the products then it is giving me the list of the products separated by the comma uh, separated by the new line so th that is what the interviewer has asked okay so let me tell you uh, what uh, this or uh, this condition means so uh, so uh, okay so here uh, what I have done I have just selected uh, four products right so let's see how the condition evaluates so is filtered product table so here I, I will get true because my product column is filtered right I have applied the filtered and I have selected all the uh, the four products so this the uh, so here I'll get the true right and for this part for this particular part what I will get I will get the true as well because count rows of product table this table right values of so here the count rows of product table would be four because I have selected only the four products because it is respecting the filters right but uh, here I will get uh, the unique number of products uh, irrespective of the filters because what all is does it removes any filters that might have been applied to a column so here I will get all the unique all the all, like the total number of the products irrespective of what users has, has selected right so 4 is not equal to the number of rows so this will also evaluate to the true so true and true so here both conditions are satisfied and that's why this is I'm getting this in the result the selected list of the products right but let's see I select all the products then how the condition will evaluate let me tell you yeah so here is filtered product table so we do not we didn't have like we have not applied any kind of filter all is selected right so this will become false and here this will become true because here the count rows of the product table because I have selected all the products so it will give me no filter so it will give me uh, same number of rows and this table will also give me the same number of rows because we have already told power bi that remove all the filters so true and false this will return me false so true and false will evaluate to a false because this condition is not satisfying and that's why it is it has given us this result so uh, this is how you can tackle such kind of question so let's have a look on the third question so show weekday versus weekend split of sales in each month so I am having the month in the x axis and I am tracking the total sales and this is a year slicer so the interviewer has asked that is split the, uh, these columns so uh, they wanted to see the weekday versus weekend sales like if 
like january is having 1.3 millions of sales then uh, out of this 1.3 million how much sales belong to the weekdays and weekends so this is the question so how can you go about that so you need to create a column again right so let me go to the date table and see okay so i need to create a column which will give me for each row whether this date belongs to the weekday or the weekend so let me create a column i will name it as weekday or weekend okay so here i can make use of weekday dex function so i will create a measure and i will use weekday it accepts date as an argument and the second argument is a return type so let me pass the date okay so for return time it has given us one two three i can choose any of them so what exactly it means let me tell you quickly okay so here you can see uh, let me search for it hmm. okay so here you can see uh, in return type i am having this thing so if i want that my week begins on sunday then i should write one and uh, uh, ends on saturday so i should write uh, I, I i will give it will give me the seven number for saturday and sunday for one so if i write one in the argument and if i write two in the argument so it will give uh, it will consider monday as a first day of the week and sunday is a seventh day of the week so this is what we want so i'm gonna write two in the argument so let's see what it has returned okay so here you can see this is my day of weeks name so for wednesday it has given us three for thursday four so this is what we wanted now we can just simply tell power bi like uh, return if my week day if it is greater than five so it would be uh, weekend because six would be saturday and seventh would be sunday so both the values are greater than five so i want weekend otherwise give me weekday that's it so what i have done i have categorized each date in my calendar table whether that day falls on weekend or weekday if it is falling from like if the day is from monday to friday so that would be weekday and saturday sunday that would be weekend so let's go to the report view and what i can do i can make use of the that newly created calculated column and i, I can drag it on legend okay so you can see on january i the date uh, like the sales 1 million comes from the weekdays and from weekend the sales was 0 0.3 million so this is how you can answer this question yeah so that's all about today's video and if you guys like my content so please subscribe to my channel and share my video with your friends family members and colleagues